Hey, happy Friday, boys and girls. It is Josh back once again before the weekend befalls us all to shed some further light on the expanding story between the two upcoming high-end consumer desktop CPUs that are heading our way very soon. I'm speaking, of course, about AMD's Zen-based Summit Ridge and Intel's Cabby Lake. Now, I did go over some of the more general information regarding the respective platforms for these two chips in my last video, so check that out for some broader details on AM4 and Socket 1151 Generation 2. But today, we're taking a look at some new information and some of the details regarding the architectures of these chips that may well power some of our own boxes in the not too distant future. So, starting things off with AMD, let's take a closer look at the Zen architecture. Now, Zen is a brand new clean slate design that's been created from the ground up by the insanely smart and already highly accomplished CPU architect Jim Keller. And even though Jim left AMD recently to go to work with Elon Musk and company over at Tesla, he was instrumental in designing the all-new architecture that will carry AMD forward into the foreseeable future. If you guys recall, I did briefly cover some of AMD's history, uh, some of their more prominent history anyway, in my last video. And this is the very same engineer that was responsible for architecting a lot of AMD's previous design wins as far as CPUs were concerned. Uh, he was the chief architect on the Athlon XP and the Athlon 64 processors, which, like I say, were the most competitive CPU products in the history of the company, and it looks like he has done it again with Zen. Positioning AMD to be as competitive in the space as they once were, and certainly more competitive than they've been in over a decade. So, what is so special about Zen as an architecture, and with the help of Jim Keller, what exactly have AMD cooked up here? Well, we've all been hearing for a while, and recently we've seen the massive gains in IPC the company has been touting, and we're starting to get some answers as to how AMD have made this happen. So first up on the list of improvements over the previous AMD designs, is the move to what's called SMT or simultaneous multi-threading, which basically is the equivalent to Intel's long-in-use hyper-threading, and it means that each individual core can now execute two threads at the same time, a principal thread with a very high priority and a secondary thread that can be pushed through when opportunity allows. Now this is very different from AMD's previous approach of using CMT or clustered multi-threading on their bulldozer and further iterations of that design. With CMT, AMD essentially created two distinct integer cores that shared a single floating point cache and front end. And while this did allow for two identical integer operations to be run simultaneously, AMD was essentially using two identical but smaller integer cores along with that one floating point core in this configuration. And by moving over to SMT, AMD have really cleared up a lot of room on their chip and they're able to use a single larger and more robust integer core with each core now being able to process threads much more quickly while still leaving opportunity for another secondary thread to be run in parallel. While this obviously provides a massive boost to single-threaded performance, because that larger integer core is just more robust by itself and can run those operations much more quickly, it also leaves room for some additional power savings over the two physical integer core design. Another thing that's been improved on Zen over the previous AMD designs is the inclusion of micro-op cache. Now, AMD and Intel have both been using very deep instruction pipelines within their CPUs ever since the launch of Bulldozer for AMD and Sandy Bridge on Intel's side. And they have done this to allow these chips to achieve maximum and high clock rates and frequencies but at the same time, these deeper pipelines, while they do allow for that to happen, they do cause some just overall higher latency within the CPU. 
and they also raise up the amount of misprediction errors in the branch prediction pipeline. Um, now Intel saw this issue pretty readily and with Sandy Bridge they introduced this micro op cache which greatly reduces the penalty for these misprediction errors uh, when doing branch prediction which these CPUs do all the time and Sandy Bridge like I say has had this ever since and if you'll note those CPUs can still reach very high clock frequencies just like the AMD bulldozers can but they have a substantially reduced penalty for how they got to those higher speeds. So these are just a couple of things that AMD have done to increase their instructions per clock and reduce the penalties for errors when doing branch prediction. And at the same time, this really does give Zen a much more balanced design in terms of its integer to floating point performance with these new Zen cores having a one-to-one -one integer to floating point core ratio as opposed to the old bulldozer and iterations of that architecture design that had a two to one ratio of integer cores to floating point cores which did cause for some imbalance in certain scenarios that required more floating point calculations such as gaming. So we pair these improvements anyway with a greatly enhanced system for how these new Zen cores interact with the level one cache AMD moving this cache from a write through process to a lower latency write back system along with enhancements to latency and throughput on the level 2 and level 3 caches and we really are going to see some very good boost in how effectively these chips can process instructions on a clock to clock basis when compared to their older AMD counterparts and even with the likes of Intel's latest such as Broadwell E Skylake and Cabby Lake uh, yet to be seen, but things are looking much better for AMD in this respect regardless. Which brings us to Intel. Just what do Intel have in store for us and are the AM4 compatible Summit Ridge chips from AMD really going to be competing with Cabby Lake or are they more likely to be competing with Broadwell E and the X99 platform? I for one think AMD has really positioned Summit Ridge well and I think that means that these CPUs will fall somewhere in between Broadwell E and Cabby Lake in terms of their overall IPC. I also think they're going to be priced mostly in the realm of Cabby Lake with all of AMD's 4 core 8 thread options and some of the lower end 8 core and 16 thread options being priced from $200 to somewhere under $400. Although I do still think we may see some of their higher end, higher clocked 8 core and 16 thread parts getting up there into the price range of the lower end Broadwell E chips. And I think that these chips will be fully capable of displaying great value in that kind of market, uh, in that kind of price bracket, providing competitive IPC greater core and thread count for the money, and a platform feature set that more closely resembles Intel's higher end X99 Broadwell E platform in terms of its feature set and PCIe lanes, etc. As I mentioned previously, Cabby Lake is really more of an iterative upgrade over Skylake than anything else, which isn't all bad. Skylake already has what is widely considered to be some of the best IPC in the business, if not the best. And it already includes a lot of these technologies such as micro op caching and Intel's hyper threading, which is basically SMT, that is going to be rolled out on a already mature 14 nanometer process that Intel has been working on for a while and surely have a lot of those kinks worked out and a lot of the dust already kicked off of that in terms of a fabrication process. So we can again probably expect in the neighborhood of about a five to 10% performance boost per clock and also the addition of Intel's new Optane technology for things like 3D X point or cross point, uh, which is essentially a new non-volatile storage medium that is basically as fast as your RAM yet will hold your data without power being on uh, which RAM will not obviously, has even greater endurance and far less latency than traditional 3D VNAND, which is in most SSDs today. 
and that platform will bring four extra PCIe lanes as well, bringing the total to 24 for motherboards based on the new Socket 1151 Generation 2 chipsets uh, being Z270 and H270. So those motherboards, you know, will have that new technology to interface with those new super high-powered SSDs and memory, as well as having some extra PCIe lanes there uh, that you can use to interface with those storage technologies. So all of this does add up to a pretty compelling package for the right person. And I say that because, as mentioned, these chips, these Cabby Lake CPUs, are going to retain the same core and thread count as their Skylake counterparts, coming in only two or four core and two to eight thread variants. And while this is still surely great for anyone needing just the best IPC or single thread performance over anything else, it may not be ideal for those of us that require more cores and threads for an ever-increasing number of games and software titles that can and do parallelize their task to make use of the extra cores and not just each core's individual ability. So for those folks, Summit Ridge chips will definitely look to compete and in my opinion undercut what Intel will be offering with Broadwell E or possibly the next iteration of those parts depending on AMD's actual launch window. Uh, with rumors swirling though of AM4 having closer to 40 PCIe lanes, it could offer a very compelling mix of higher core count and thread count for the money, an equally robust I.O. system, and a very competitive performance in terms of IPC to Intel's Broadwell E X99 platform that for many people, including myself, is simply out of reach financially at the moment at least if I want to keep my car and or female companion. So I'm looking forward to that uh, kind of battle happening there at the higher end, at kind of mid-market between all of those CPUs and platforms. Now, the last thing I want to look at here real quick is just a quick rundown and reminder about fabrication and a look at efficiency. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know every last intricate detail of how AMD and Intel have arrived at their respective efficiencies within all of these chips. And remember to take all of this with a grain of salt, as some of these products are not actually released yet. But just for fun, let's take a look at what AMD's Zen-based Summit Ridge chips and Intel's Cabby Lake and Broadwell E chips are going to use in terms of power keeping in mind that all of these are being fabricated on a 14 nanometer FinFET process. So we can see that AMD's Zen-based Summit Ridge are all set to operate between 65 and 95 watts of total power, while Intel is likely going to get higher clock speeds with fewer cores on Cabby Lake using equivalent power, we already know that Broadwell E uses a more power thirsty 140 watts right from the lowest 6-core, 12-thread packing, 6800K, all the way up to the 10-core and 20-thread monster of the 6950X. Which, in truth, this higher amount of electricity running through those chips needs to go somewhere, and this requires more robust cooling, and as we can already see with these chips already being out in the market, kind of limits their potential in terms of overclocking when compared to their lower TDP and core count cousins on either Skylake and presumably Cabby Lake as well. So what I expect we're going to wind up with here is a series of CPUs from both AMD and Intel that appear to be more unified on AMD's side in terms of their architecture, in terms of their IPC and efficiency, platform features, etc. than do the platform and architecture that are available in terms of options from Intel with their Cabby Lake and Broadwell E coming on different platforms, providing different numbers of PCIe lanes, different options in terms of next generation IO support or lack thereof for things like 3D XPoint, and a massive difference there in terms of core and thread count, etc. So a little bit more confusing from Intel and will those products be worth it is yet to be seen depending on what AMD can offer and where those chips and platforms fall in terms of price. But anyway guys, I would love to know what you think about all of this. 
Is this just some wild rambling by me, like I'm off my meds and have gone crazy? Or does this make sense to you? How do you think things will shake out in terms of IPC for all of these chips, efficiency, platform cost, and features? And when the heck do you think we'll actually see Cabby Lake and Summit Ridge join the party? Like I say, I can't afford Broadwall E right now, but I sure would love more cores for video rendering and games that support next generation APIs. I'm hoping that Summit Ridge makes a serious impact on how Intel prices their own options after its release, and looking forward to getting more for my money either way. As always, I really hope you enjoy this content. If you feel like throwing me a bone, hit that sub button and show me some love. It's always greatly appreciated. And I will keep doing my best to make these videos better and better for you guys. It's coming up on six months now. I've been doing this little experiment. And I definitely have learned a lot in terms of video editing and just trying to figure out what you guys want to see uh, on my own. But I've learned a lot from you guys that comment down below and message me and, and, and share and do all kinds of stuff as well. Um, you know, I appreciate all the compliments, all the criticisms, and you guys always manage to teach me some things that I never knew, which is just awesome. So thank you very much for all of it. You guys really do mold this channel and keep me inspired. Uh, with that being said, guys, I hope you have a phenomenal, phenomenal weekend. I'll catch you in the next one very soon, and peace out.